All right, good morning, everybody. I'm going to run through this demo together with the class. Um, I just want to do it on video. That way it's going to run a little bit more smoothly in class. All right, so what we want to figure out today, so here we see these tubes. These tubes are filled up with blue water and beads. Okay, some of these beads are really large. So here we got big beads. Some of these beads are medium. And some of these beads are really tiny. What we wanna figure out today is which one of these three beakers has the most water in it. Okay, so there we can see these three beakers there. We got large, we got medium, and we got small. All right, which one of these three holds the most water? And what do you think? What do you think by looking at these? Which one of these three has the most water in it? Think about that for a second. Okay. The way we are going to figure this out is right here we have these three tall columns filled with the same amount of beads as these beakers and filled with the same amount of water. So I filled these up earlier, and what I found is that actually all three of them have a very similar amount of water in it. Our column with the large beads, I was able to fit 225 milliliters of water. Okay, you might notice up there that, but Mr. Trunkley doesn't have water all the way up top. That's because it's really, really leaky. Okay, it's leaking down here. Before we start moving on with the experiment, I'm going to make sure I put this water back in the tube. Okay. So I was able to get 225 milliliters of water into this tube, up to the top of the beads. Here for the medium tube, I got a surprisingly similar number. I got 222 milliliters in here. And for the small one, I also got another surprisingly similar number. And the number I got for that one is 218. So all three of these, even though they have very different bead sizes, I was still able to get basically the same amount of water in there within seven milliliters. Seven milliliters is not much. Okay. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to run these through so now we know that, okay, they all basically hold about the same amount of water. Now the next thing we want to know is how quickly does the water run through the beads from the top down to the bottom? And this is what we call the permeability time. So I'm going to do these one by one, starting with the smallest one. So here's our smallest one. Okay, so there we can see the water up top. It's all the way up top here. And here we can see this down here. And I'm going to stop it once most of the water has gone all the way down to the bottom here. Okay, I'm going to go get my phone because I need a stopwatch. And then we are going to release this. And have it go. So here I've got my stopwatch. I'm going to reset my stopwatch. Okay. And once I re let go of this tube here, you're going to start noticing the water is going to come down our tube. And I'm going to record how long that takes. Okay. And there we go. It's still dripping out a little bit. You can see it's still dripping out. Once it starts to really slow down is when I will. And there we go. It's kind of started to slow down. I'm going to stop it there at 21 seconds. Okay. Now let's do the medium. So the small took 21 seconds. Let's check out 
our medium. So here's our medium here. Again, here we can see it down on the bottom. If I angle it up to the top, we can see that there's water all the way up to the top of our beads here. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna stop it once it kind of comes down to a very light trickle. So let me reset. I'm reset, so you know I'm doing it right. I'm gonna remove the clamp and I will release in three, two, one. There's all one. And there we see that coming down. So now we're done with the line and it's kind of at a little trickle now. Yeah, I'll stop it right there. And there we are. That one took about 12 seconds. So the first one took 21, the small particle size. The medium size took just about 12 seconds. And now let's do our large. Now our large is gonna take a little bit of work because as you notice, <laughs> where did all my water go? The water has slowly been dripping out the bottom. So I'm gonna get a little beaker here to catch a little bit of that water. So I'm gonna put that right there. I'm gonna put this, that's a lot of water. It's about 100 mils. I'm gonna put that back into our tube. So now we can see the water's back up to the top of the tube. I'm gonna put that there. I will reset my stopwatch. There it is reset. I'm gonna release the clamp. And in three, two, one. I'm sorry. There we see the water coming out. The line's all the way down and it's kind of at a trickle right about. And that took us nine seconds. Okay. So that's about that. So one thing, just in case you didn't believe me, you're like, well, Mr. Trunkley, you told us how much water was in there, but you didn't show us how much water is in there. Why am I supposed to believe you? So here we've got our three beakers. We've got one beaker with large, another beaker with medium, and a third beaker with small, okay? They're all about the same level. So how do we know how much is actually in those? Well, luckily, we've got really big graduated cylinders. All right, and how I'm gonna do this is here I've got this ring stand, and on top of this ring stand is a funnel with a mesh in it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna set up the ring stand like this, put the funnel in top, like that. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour that water from each of these into this, and we're gonna see how much water is in there, okay? So I'm gonna start with small. Here's my small, I'm gonna pour it in. Small one takes a little bit because the water doesn't actually want to leave the small beads. And there's our small there. Okay. And the water's just kind of dripping out of that. So let's let that drip for a little bit. We'll do it again. This time with the large beads, I've got another funnel with a mesh inside of it. I'm going to put that right there. And the large beads are easy. I'm just going to pour the large beads right in there. There's my large beads. So now I got my small beads. Now I got my large beads. Now I got one more I gotta do, and that's gonna be my medium. I'm gonna keep on letting that small drip for a little bit, and let's do our mediums. So here we've got our small, we've got our three, our one, two, and three. And if we look at this, one, two, 
and three. They're all roughly the same amount. We got a little bit more over here, a little bit less in there, a little bit more in there. But remember, this was the small, this was the medium, and this was the large. So even though the grain size is different for each of these, can you see me? Even though the grain size is different for each of these, the amount of water that we had in them was actually about the same. And in fact, you can even read these. This one we're sitting at about 180. This one I'm sitting at about 170. And this one I'm sitting at about 180 again. So they all had the same amount of water with them within about 10 milliliters, even though the grain size was very different. Okay, we're gonna fill out that table and then we're gonna work on our graphs and see what our relationships are between these three objects. Thanks.